It's called Freedom Now. It's not just geared toward, uh, toward young men, although that's where we want to do a little bit of focusing on, but also our beautiful young girls that we have here. Um, you'll hear some stories today, how people went adrift. And I love these testimonies. They're super, super helpful. But in this room today, trust me, with just the number, sheer number of people, this is an issue. And so we'd like to talk about that candidly and honestly because the Bible says if you confess your sins to one another, you can get healed. But if you keep them secret, they're shame. That's where Satan works. We spoke uh, a lot about that last week. About the, We're talking about the five lies that Satan tells us, the serpent tells us, starting in the garden. And we talked about um, youth last week, and we talked about um, singles and dating. And we talked about the purpose of dating. Today we want to talk about a more, much more broader subject, and we're going to be incredibly sensitive to this because we're going to touch on things like homosexuality, um, incest, pornography, and things that we have to deal with as a church because these evils, these lies that come in that we believe are what really start to pervert something that's so pure, and that's a gift of sex that God gives those people who are in covenantal marriage. We want to make it beautiful. We want to make it clean. God wants to make it beautiful. Amen. God wants to make it clean. We just want to show the snapshot that he's given to us so that we can bring it to the consciousness of the community that God has trusted us to. And so we have a beautiful amount of children. We have all these, be- I just can't even think, you know, like I have a 10-year-old granddaughter now, and she's becoming, you know, more and more woman-like. And I'm like, you can't wear those shorts. I mean, like I never had to say that before. And the, the time is shifting and changing. Well, why can't I, Grandma? These are my favorite shorts or, or whatever. I mean, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And we want to explain to them their beauty, uh, how to use it, how to portray it. I'll let the godmothers take care of the girls. I'll let the godfathers take care of the boys. Um, And so we want to touch a subject today that I think is going to be um, very helpful. And we have some backup here with some testimonies. I I thought when we started this series, remember, we were going to do a roundtable. And we're going to sit a bunch of people up here, um, young, old, middle, just just to hear different, you know, just their different takes on it. Um, I want you to know that I don't take this subject very lightly. Um, I, uh, I started in January of this year, 2013, with my research and, and a lot of research. I spent yesterday, let alone this year, but yesterday probably about eight hours watching testimonies of people who are pro-homosexual, who are pro-infidelity, um, you know, who are pro-you-can-live-together. I, 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 I need to see the consciousness. And I have to tell you, I would pull away once or twice to really reflect on God what do you say about this? I have to always calibrate myself to, God, what do you say? Because you made me. You have my best intentions in mind. And before I get all clouded and convoluted, I just need to clear the waters. They get muddied. And I'm going to tell you something today. Some of your water is muddied today. And um, I know that we'll lose people on some of the truths that we're going to share today, but they're God's truths, and we would be remiss to say that we're leaders and not lead you to that well. Do you understand? So I understand this is really sensitive. Um, it's not they're bad, we're good. It, I don't even, you're going to see our heart today in a way maybe that you've never seen it. And, and it's not that we're going to physically lose somebody. Yeah. Um, that's not what we're talking about. What we're, we're talking about, you know how you can depart in heart on some issues. We do this as, as couples. You know, we do this as marrieds, or we do this when we're dating or whatever. That uh, subject will come up that we're just not one in. And so when this happens, and this has to happen in church, we bring grace. Jesus came, and he was full of grace and truth, right? If, you, if I just give you truth, it will always turn out to be law, mm-hmm. rules and regulations. Mm-hmm. If I just give you grace, and that anything that you want to do is just okay, that's not true either. But if I say, if I give grace and truth, then what I'm going to do is tell you the truth in love. Um, and sometimes it takes a little bit to swallow, but that's what Jesus was all about when he walked the earth. He brought grace and truth. And so that's what we're, that's what our attempt is here. This has got to come down, man. Um, I, I don't need it that loud. Can everybody hear me in the back? Okay, bring her down. Thank you. Um, um, we want to bring here. If I bring grace and truth, it's going to lead to discipleship. Mm-hmm. And that's what we're all about here. We're not here about entertainment or about any kind of fluff. It doesn't need to be that way. What we need to do is bring truth 
so I can apply it to my life to weed out the things that I learned because this statement is so true in our society. And our society seeks to educate not only us, but our offspring mm -hmm. on how to live life. Mm -hmm. And it's wrong. And at some point, we have to say it's wrong, and we don't say it's wrong like this. It's mm -hmm. wrong. And let's go to the abortion clinic and kill a doctor. Um, we don't always have to voice and, and be known for what we're against. I want to teach my people that, to be able to proclaim what they're for. Mm -hmm. Right? I don't even have to address what it's against. Your conscience tells you that everyone's against it. We're just doing it because it's the easy way to go, mm -hmm. the easy way to do. You know what I'm saying? So as we covered, our, um, we covered last week about the lies that Satan tells, there were five that we're covering. The first two were about youth and kids. Today is about what he tells us all. Um, and it's going to be in different areas. I am not going to pinpoint and, and hone my skills <laughs> to bash homosexuality because I am an equal opportunity basher when it comes to things that are going to hurt you and keep you from going to the presence of the Lord. Yeah. Okay. So we'll, we'll use scripture today to bash you. No, <laughs> no, 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 but I, I also want to declare who we are because I think I, in my own personal, in my immediate family, not my family, but my immediate family, there's two beautiful people who are practicing homosexuals. And I love them with all my heart, so you'd be hard-pressed to shove me to the floor with this. But I want them to be treated with the respect and the admiration and the love that a fornicator would get, mm -hmm. that an adulterer would get, that a perjurer would get, that a liar would get. Pedophile. We have no yeah. right to say, you're wrong, mm -hmm. I'm right. We need to have them taste and see that the Lord is good. Because and then gonna... he does a work that we can't by pointing our finger at him. And it takes time for that to happen. It takes time for that to happen. It's not our goal. Our goal is Jesus, not mm -hmm. your sexual activity. Right. Our goal is you seeing who you are. And then he takes care of your Amen. gluttony, your greediness, your idolatry. It's, there's, I can, we can keep on going on. We've got to focus on the right fight. Mm -hmm. if, if you want to really know, there is no fight. The battle's been won. Yeah. <laughs> we just Amen. execute the grace of letting people know that the fight is over. And speaking of fights, um, our fight is linear. It's forward. These fights we get into and these arguments that are sideways is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. And the stuff that we start wanting to pick Lynn off each other and, the, the, you know, we're not getting our way, that is a sideways fight. Yeah. It is not the fight we need to be engaged with. When you're struggling with stuff like this, all you're doing is wanting your own way. Yeah. That's all we're doing. Mm -hmm. We want to go forward here with yeah. this. And yeah. to do that, we need the right information to walk into battle. Because I'm not going to give you a squirt gun to take a hill. Yeah. I'm going to give you ammunition and a good gun to take a hill. Yeah. Here's a I want to just preempt this story. You have to know our hearts again. This story is about somebody who lived a homosexual lifestyle, who found Jesus Christ. It's his testimony. Mm -hmm. Um, Big save. It's not, it's not, he's right now. He's just, he was lost and now he's saved. Mm -hmm. Again, I, he's not a token convert that we want to use to drive a point home. I don't care where you are at on this journey or where your friends are at on this journey. We love you. Mm -hmm. And we want to share the grace that God's, God's given us. And we want to help you get out of messes that you may get into. And it might take several, several years. And, so, and something I just saw is Kathy saying that. We all have something we gave up when you got saved. When you got born again, you could write it down. I can. I can write down on a piece of paper what I gave up. Right? So it's, it's not about um, Baloney. No, what, just, <laughs> pork. that's when I met her. No. When I met Jesus, it was all kind of stuff. No, no, no. Um, so it's not about, you know, this guy is right because of what he, he gave up. It's just, it's a byproduct of getting saved. He became aware of something that wasn't pleasing. You dig? Mm -hmm. Why, well, it's a good, it's a good testimony. I kind of have to start from conception. My mom was 16. Um, the whole family basically wanted her to have an abortion. She was the only one who didn't want it. And um, eventually even was on an abortion clinic table and, and going to go through with it. And then she started weeping on the table and the doctor allowed her to leave and go home. And um, then my parents were divorced. And um, as early as I can remember, I started to have homosexual thoughts and desires and feelings. And being raised in a broken family like most people in America, um, I 
had my own way of processing my pain, and I chose drugs and alcohol. I actually made a conscious choice. I remember at 13 years old, I chose popularity and partying over studying and being smart because I was on a track to even going to private schools at one point in time, and um, chose the wrong path. <laughs> But it ended up leading me to Jesus eventually. Probably at the lowest pit of my drug run, I ended up in the gay community in San Francisco, and、um, was a pretty well-known club celebrity、um, here in the city, and、um, dressed up every day in the most extravagant, wild costumes. I felt like it was family. You know, the gay community offered you celebrity. It offered it offered you affirmation. It、um, Even men would pay attention to me. Growing up, my dad wasn't in the home. You know, I I didn't have that, and、um, but I didn't understand these things while I was in it. I thought it was it was the rightest thing for me to be doing. I thought that was who I was, and and it was even righteous and holy. I really did. And at one point in time, I started to notice things fall apart.、Um, I got involved with some really、um, shady characters, people involved with witchcraft and mafia. In the gay community, and even some outside of the gay community, just high-level drug dealing, and、um, people involved with Satanism, even. And I just never believed in evil or wickedness. But then I begin, I began to pray because it was so tangible around me that I just couldn't ignore it anymore. And I just said, Lord, if there really is evil or a devil, you've got to show me, please. I don't want to be deceived. And so then the Lord started showing me that there really is. One example of it is I was walking down the street in the Castro district. I started to feel like these people were trying to literally take my soul to hell, and I and I was thinking that in my head.、And、this homeless man walked up to me and, and mocked me out loud, and he said, "They're trying to take my soul." And I was like, "Oh Lord!" And I ran down the street like screaming, literally during the broad daylight, going, "Oh God, this is real." There's a hell. There's a devil. It's like, how could this homeless man have known what I was thinking quietly in my mind? And I wasn't high. I was, you know, just walking down the street. So I knew that was one of the many instances that God started to open my eyes. Almost like the matrix, the first matrix, where you take the red pill or the blue pill. Like I wanted to be awake. I wanted to know what I was facing. And then the Lord said, "Okay, I'll show you." But when he showed me, I almost couldn't handle it. I, I, I was panicking every day. I was in terror. I didn't know if God would forgive me because I felt such a consciousness of my sinfulness and just my utterly deserving hell. So ultimately,、um, I was taken against my will in, into the San Francisco General Hospital by this woman who was a main witch in the city. She called herself a main witch, and I cried out to Jesus in that moment while they were the police even tied me up. I mean, I, it was like a major, major. Um, ordeal. When I prayed in that moment, the Lord started filling my heart with peace, tangible peace. My heart rate went down. I knew I was going to be okay. I went into the psych ward of the San Francisco General Hospital. They were saying that I was crazy. This man in the hospital who was grotesque and just pus and boils all over his body, and this completely naked and muscular even was growling and yelling at me. I'm going to tear him apart and saying all these vile things he was going to do. And I'm in the next room with a light off, tied down in a stretcher. And I prayed, and I felt like God said, "Do not raise your voice. Hold your peace, and I will fight for you." So I prayed silently. I said, "God, you have to do something now. I can't take it anymore." And God said, "What's my name?" Who do you say that I am?、And、all these different names of different gods flooded my mind because I had been in San Francisco for so long in the underground scene, and everybody says it's this, it's that, it's the other. But I finally just said, you know, if it's not Jesus, I don't want it. So I said in Jesus' name silently. And this man in the next room started saying, "Shut him up! Shut him up, nurse, nurse! Shut him up!" And that's when I knew, this is the Lord. God is real. And he's this man in the next room is scared of him, so God must be scary. I started kind of figuring out a lot about God all in one moment, and eventually got delivered out of that situation. I came from being the most extravagant homosexual drug. I was on ecstasy, GHB, Special K, all the drugs you can imagine, and, and I had one of the best looking boyfriends in the Castro, and I was celebrated. I had it all. I had it made in the shade. To becoming such a hardcore. On fire, Christian. 
I mean, martyr me for Jesus. I'm telling you, I want it in God's timing. You know, but far be it from me to ever bow to the intimidation of the spirit of this age or be ashamed of the gospel. Oh, hell no. I am not ashamed of the gospel, and I will not be ashamed of Jesus' name. He saved me. He redeemed me. I'm married now. I have a beautiful wife. She's pregnant, nine months pregnant. I'm so happy that God has given me natural affection for a woman. That's a miracle right there. I remember on, on our wedding night, I mean, not to give too much detail, but um, when we finally consummated our marriage, I mean, I literally screamed at the top of my lungs, Jesus! <laughs> like, I was so happy. He delivered me, you know? I love women. And I love my wife's body. I love her physically. And it's holy. And God is good. And he created sex. And he wants us to enjoy it in the proper context. And guess what? He can do it. Even for those who struggle with homosexuality their whole life. He can set them straight. Yeah, yeah. Good. The idea of learning about, I mean, we, I told David, I live in such a blessed culture. In my whole environment, I, I, I listen to many adverse testimonies, too. Yesterday, I listened to people who are homosexual bishops and people who love Jesus with all their heart but believe that homosexuality is good. There's a lot of tension with this subject. I want to state very clearly, we don't know the answer except for love wins. Love wins. Love wins. I don't have answers. I think every situation is going to be different. And I just want you to know that we are Jesus on earth. Did he cast away the prostitute? Did he cast away? No. no he, he, he met them where they were. And it was so evident that he had the words of truth that they were easily changed and follow him. I, th I think about the woman of the well, which is how we started the subject five marriages, living with somebody at that moment, and when she met him, it all changes. It changes. And when you hear this young lady's story, her story is very a very tough story, but she is me. She is us. And so when I look at this, we've just got tons to learn. So let's take a look at what the scripture says. I do want to just make some images. I want to show you some stuff. This is very upsetting, but this is what the world is teaching. These are the lies that come from the serpent. In this picture, you'll see something that is unbelievably foul. This is foul. And these children will be raised, and they will be taught that this is God, and it's not. Um, who told you that would be my response. Who told you that? Did God say that? Um, this is what God said. When the woman who was caught in adultery, Jesus said, neither do I judge you. Now stop doing what you're doing because it's harmful. It'll hurt you. It's not God's best for you. And that's why he gave us this book to guide us. Because I'm going to tell you straight up that the enemy is going to lie to you. You know what? The first time I did cocaine, it felt so awesome. It felt so good. I could not wait. I thought I was a new human being. I thought I cannot wait to do this again. I could give my life to this. This is amazing. It felt like I was on top of the world, but it intended to drive me right into the ground. Mm -hmm. And if I would have gave myself to what I felt, I would still be doing it. Mm -hmm. I think sin feels good for the moment, but in the end leads to death. Mm -hmm. um, we look at this, and this is also an abhorrent, and I'm sorry, and so is Jesus. Um, but who told you that? Not in this church. This is what he said to the man who was unclean. You can read that if you want. I don't know if I can. It's up on the screen. In Mark 1, 40 through 42, a man with leprosy came to him and begged him on his knees, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Filled with compassion, Jesus reached out his hand and touched the man. I am willing, he said, be clean. Immediately, the leprosy left him and he was cured. Leprosy at the time was a disease that uh, a very, it was very shameful. Um, they had to cover themselves completely head to foot. And then as they walked through the crowd, because they still had to eat, so they had to go to the store or, or you know, be out in public, but they had to announce continually, unclean. They had to scream it to the top of their lungs so that people could get out of the way. Because touching leprosy at the time, you, you got it. You had it. 
the disease of leprosy actually doesn't kill you. It's the damage you do to your own body that kills you. And, and they used, in um, Jesus' time, they used, as he taught and as Paul taught, they used the word that they likened sin to leprosy. Sin is the disease, yeah. like leprosy. Mm -hmm. But it what kills you, you is, is the numbing from the leprosy and the damage you do to yourself from it. Your physical and, and that, body. And that's something that's a good, that's a good picture. So let's, let's establish what kind of church and community. There's, there's two types of communities that, that you're going to see that will address this in certain ways. Um, uh, the church is the only power on earth that exists for the members outside of its church. Mm -hmm. And so when we start focusing on, on the area that God's given us to serve, we've got to encounter every one of these devices, every one of these ills. And we are actually being trained on how to handle that and bring grace into the situation. One church sees the community in a state of being reconciled, which we talked about last week. Let me just tell you what that means. They're pre-Christians. God so loved the world that he gave his son that all would be saved. So in essence, gang, the whole world is saved. The payment has already been made. Been made but they haven't been redeemed. Mm -hmm. They haven't been redeemed because an ambassador mm -hmm. needs to go and tell them that your sin debt has been paid in full. So everyone on their front porch has a, a gift that's wrapped nice and neat. Um, the ones that choose to open that gift and accept that gift are the ones that will receive, the sal receive salvation. It's an odd word that we use, right? You have to receive salvation. But salvation has been made available for everyone on the, on the planet. I know that's kind of hard to wrap your noggin around sometimes. So I, I struggle with the word everybody, <laughs> everyone, right? Because we pick and choose. They don't deserve it. Neither did I. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we'll see that in the scripture. Now, the second church sees everybody as sin sick and judged. They're condemned. Mm -hmm. There's you guys are the good guys. We're the bad guys. We have it right. You have it wrong. Tough life. And and really, they're a church that wants to bring get, collect people, bring them into a place. To, to give them a message to be more like them. And that's not what we're doing. We're making disciples, ambassadors, to go out and reflect the hands, the feet, the heart of Jesus in this situation to heal, recover, and restore the sick and bring them home safely. That's what we should be doing. Now, not walking in that power, church, is evident everywhere. I don't need to talk to anybody here who can take a, a, a close you know, a survey of all the churches they're bound by such sin and not knowing who they are and their beauty and their own forgiveness and their own inheritance that they're actually not walking in the fullness of what God has for them. And that's what our intent is. Our intent is to empower you, equip you, and launch you and send you off to make disciples. That is what we're called to do. Um, I wrote something down here if you want to... Um, Uh, the, the, the way that we win here is we've got to see the world as belonging to God and that he has given us stewardship over it. And we lost that stewardship with the first Adam, but it was regained in the second Adam. And now we truly have dominion over the enemy. Every demon spirit, every lying spirit that tells you you need to cut yourself, that tells you you need to eat this, that tells you you need to store this into hoarding, that tells you that you're not going to be able to live without these pharmaceuticals, that tells you that you can't live without a drink, there's a lying spirit of which you have the power and authority to take control over. I want you to see the picture in, um, you know, what's that called? Won it, most won it, most won it, the show... And you watch the cops take, take down the bad guy. And they're always like, get down, get down. I'll kill you, get down. That's how you are in the spirit. You can tell the demon to back off, get off, get down, bow your knee. You will not have this human being. You can do that in your prayer. You can do that in your life. You have to take that authority, though. If you don't, the enemy knows that you don't know who you are by the secret sins in your life and what he whispers to you, and he knows that he's got a stronghold on you. That's what a stronghold is, gang. A stronghold is a sin that's got you captive that you don't want nobody to know about. 
And so you're free, you're free, you're free. Jesus says you're clean, you've been washed, you're purified, and you're sanctified. And when you do confess your sins, even today, like when these young men give their testimonies about being bound to porn, they're still going to be tempted in their life, but they're no longer mastered by it. Right. They can talk about it and say, that's an area that i got to keep myself accountable. That's one area that you guys got to help me with. If you've got a temper, you got to keep me accountable. If you've got an eating problem, help keep me accountable, church. Help me be the best that Jesus has calls me to be. That's why these life groups are so very important. We evict the enemy. Now listen, we've been given Green Castle. We simply have one of the largest churches in Greencastle. We have three city blocks. The Father is pleased at what we're doing. We are not going to, the enemy's not going to roll out a red carpet for us and just say, have carte blanche. There's going to be tension. There's going to be conflict. There's going to be people who talk very poorly about your pastors. There's going to be people that say, oh, there are a bunch of kooks over there. But here's what you got to know. And rightfully so. <laughs> yeah, and there are. <laughs> um, and um, here's what you got to know. We have been given this area to bring heaven to earth. Amen. Start thinking that way. Start feeling that way. Redeem everything within our vicinity. And God will, if in fact he thinks it's good for us, increase us. That is not our goal. I don't want to get bigger. I want you to walk in the power that I want to walk in the power that he's died to give me. And that is our quest and our goal, to live in community in love and bring whosoever will, into that safe place. We redeem them. We redeem them with our love, with our laughter, with our joy, with our favor, with our life, with our health, and with our wealth. We come to them and say, taste and see. The Lord is good. He's been so good to me. You don't tell them what they ought to do. You tell them what he's done for you. You live a life that's full. You live a life that has a smile on your face and say, I have been redeemed. Let the redeemed of the Lord say Praise so. Amen. Go tell somebody that the Lord has changed your life. I used to be just like you. I used to feel the same way you feel, but I have been so transformed by the love of Christ that I can't help myself but tell you that the way that Satan's lying to you, he lied to me, but it's a lie. I'm telling you it's a lie. Amen. And so this is what we get to do. We said when the angel came, joy, joy to the world. The Lord has come. Let earth receive her king. Let every mouth, I don't know the rest of the song. <laughs> prepare, let every heart prepare him room and let heaven and nature sing. We cannot, this cannot, this, this redemptive love cannot be presented by a joyless Amen. people. And when our marriages aren't whole, we're not very joyful. And when our kids aren't in a place where they feel the safety of God's covenant, we're not joyful. And that's what we're committed to teaching you. We've got to make disciples. We've got to stop believing the lie. And listen, after eight hours of watching all these testimonies, because I just felt a, a real um, uh, a need to be prepared to hear these sides and to understand I loved every one of them. I felt them. And I have to tell you that I would pull away. And in that instance of listening to these testimonies and looking at these beautiful human beings, I felt a measure of duplicity. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Double-mindedness. Mm -hmm. Meaning like, well, God, I mean, I, I would love to have private conversations. I'm not going to use this platform about some of the conversations that they have to justify inerrant lifestyles of uh, polygamy. They believe that that's OK. I mean, I could go on, and it's not. But here's what I want for you when I look out. If you've got Christ in you, can I see a little joy up in here? Mm -hmm. Let me see it. Let me see it. There you go. There you go. The joy of the Lord is our very strength. strength. Amen. 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 No smile. Give me a little smile. Let me, let me see a little joy. Got a little joy. Got to have teeth. <laughs> um, so line number three that he tells all of us is this. The restrictions that God puts on us is pure and tentacle and keeps us from enjoying sex to the fullest. Um, all of us made this statement, or, sh or maybe not all, but um, at least I did, and maybe you can identify with it. See, all I can do is I was a really good sinner, so I did all this stuff that I can preach on today. Um, it wasn't God's best for me to experience the stuff I experienced, but I did. And so I, I can talk to you from a side that maybe you didn't experience, but did anybody in the house um, ever say this statement or hear this statement from someone, that God just wants to kill all my fun 
and not and I don't want to have and he doesn't want me to have fun. He wants to be the big killjoy. I think all of us dealt with that. I did when I was teetering on the edge of becoming a Christian or learning about him. I'm like, man, he can't have no fun and follow the Lord, you know. I got a big big wave in the back there. Thank you, Pastor. Um, the word Puritanical speaks about the Puritans. The Puritans came here for uh, for religious reasons, um, for almost a pious religious reasons, to have extreme religious practices in their life. It was extreme extremity to everything. Mm -hmm. And so what Satan comes to tell us is that if you follow God, you're going to have to be extreme in every belief. And that's a lie. That's a lie. Um, there are subjects in the Bible that Kathy's alluding to, like homosexuality and different ones that are, you know, when you're sure about something and you say it emphatically that it's this way, it almost sounds judgmental. You know, it can, it can, whatever subject you're talking about, certain subjects, you'll sound like you're being judgmental. And that's, so when she feels duplicitous, what we start doing is trying to handle a very difficult situation in a um, politically correct yeah. way. Posture. Or a politically correct posture, if you will. <laughs> to not step on toes and hurt feelings, and that is never my um, my uh, objective is to hurt anybody's feelings, but my objective is to make sure that we level the humps in the playing field mm -hmm. and that everyone is seeing the same and that not, you know, that everyone has the same opportunities to come to truth, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so when we handle these types of subjects here, um, we, we try to do it and not hurt feelings. But again, grace and truth, when it, when it connects something in your heart, is going to hurt feelings. I have um, someone in my immediate family, not immediate family, but my family tree that's uh, homosexual. I also have somebody, in, people in my family that are just crazy liars, mm -hmm. um, adulterers, fornicators, mm -hmm. and all the other aiders mm -hmm. in life. <laughs> um, if, if, if you, my, my family's like Duck Dynasty, but crazy. <laughs> that show is scripted, and even though they look like hillbillies, I don't really think they are. Mm -hmm. My people are really <laughs> hillbillies. <laughs> so I came but, from some crazy stuff. And I, I think, too, like if the dialogue was to be open, it would be more about um, um, right now the predominance of, um, you know, what, what do they call it, Section 8 or whatever, the marriage laws for the same-sex marriage. And, yeah, I don't know. What's I mean, I just, we're lobbying the wrong things. Mm -hmm. We're fighting the wrong fight. It's a sideways and so, fight. I want, I want to just, puritanical means very strict, um, no fun, and that if you follow God, you're not going to have fun. But the truth is, and this is all surveys, this is not Christian surveys, that the best sex is being had by committed, monogamous, married couples. Mm -hmm. They're having it more frequently. They're having it without less STDs, which is tr sexually transmitted diseases. And they're and when having you say it, less, you mean none. Uh, there are no sexually transmitted diseases. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, wow, well, yeah. yeah. That's thank less. You. Thank but. you, thank you. But I want you, when, when this stuff comes, when this stuff comes, whatever comes your way, like, you have to just stop and pause and say, who told you that? Mm -hmm. You have to ask yourself inside, where did that come from? And say, Holy Spirit, help me with this. I mean, because you're going to get things that you're going to, you're going to get, you're going to get shaken. Yeah. And you, you're not supposed to have all the answers, but he does. He'll guide you and lead you. Sometimes the answer is nothing but love. It's, it's, it, you don't have to say anything. But sometimes there's a place where God will say, in love, tell them who they are. Tell them that's a lie. Um, adultery, fornication. These are the subjects that are talked about in the Bible according to sex. Adultery, fornication, bestiality, which is sex with animals, homosexuality, incest, um, pedophilia, and pornography, which fantasy. is fantasy lust. Um, every one of them, the Bible says, will destroy you. I want to read one passage from Proverbs 5. And just attend your ears to this word. Proverbs 5 is talking about the peril of the adulterer. And he says, therefore, hear me, my children, and do not depart from the words of my mouth. Remove your way, remove your way far from her, and do not go near her door or her house, lest you give your honor to others and your years to the cruel one, lest, you, lest aliens be uh, filled with your wealth and your labors go to the house of the foreigner. 
and you, and you mourn, and you mourn at last when your flesh and your body are consumed and say, how have I hated instruction and my heart despised correction? I mean, there, it will take you, you'll, you'll hear these testimonies, and every one of them, I mean, they start out just smoking a little pot, and then before, I, I listened to this guy yesterday, his testimony was so preposterous that I couldn't even believe what I was hearing, but he went from doing drugs, then of course into heroin, and because he got so addicted, he gave his kids up, his wife up, his family up, stole from everybody. You've heard these stories before. And because he loved that drug so much, he became a male prostitute. This is a young, beautiful, good-looking man. I couldn't believe my, my ears. But know this, that sin will lie to you, and it will take you so much further than you ever intended. And this is why you might think we're crazy girls or guys, young ones, when we're like, don't do that. Don't even, don't even taste it. It will fool you. It will it will trick you. You'll think it's good, and then you'll be sucked in, and then there'll be so much shame, and that's where Satan works and works and works. And then you, like this girl you're going to hear, she, she was like, I, I couldn't even see myself going to a church. I was trash. I was no good. I didn't even want people to know about my past, but Jesus cleansed me. And so when you see these things, he gives us this owner's manual, not to control you, but to bless you. And for some reason, we think we can't trust it. He's going to take our fun. Hey, they look like they're having fun. Let me tell you something. I spent a lot of time in bars and a lot of money in bars. They don't show you fat bellies hanging over, butt cracks, people puking. They don't show you that in these movies. They don't show you the smell of beer stenched everywhere, and you're so sick and ashamed of what you did the night before. They don't show you that. That is what is there. And so we're afraid to talk about this, but that's what's there. It makes it look beautiful. Sin looks really attractive for a moment. The music Music's pumping, everybody's good looking, and you're like fresh meat walking in. And Satan knows that he's going to do everything he can to pull you into this darkness. And again, I'm not trying to breed fear. I'm just saying, if you see Jesus, if you see his love, you can't turn away from it. You, I mean, but, but when you're telling kids, you're like, <laughs> mom and dad are trying to keep us from fun. I'm like, I think we need to go down and see how some people are living. You need, to, you need to see. That's why these testimonies are good. You know, this kid last week, he was 12 years old. He had his first sexual experience. 12 years old. Come on. Anybody? Nobody like, ugh. 12. And so um, it's just crazy. The owner, it's, uh, when I say it's going to destroy your life, I know I get excited. And I want you to get, I, wanna, I want you to be impassioned. I want you to be able to take that girl that's got her breast that looks like a rear end on her chest and tell her that she's beautiful without this cleavage and that what she's going to do is have people look Wait, at her. Wait, it took me a little while to get there. I'm, like, <laughs> I'm like, what? That, uh, I'm going to look that her, up. I'm not, I'm not against cleavage. I'm just saying have her. That's what they're going to look at you for. They're, they're, I want them to see this. I want them to see your heart. I want them to know who you are, not what you have. <laughs> Anyway. Still got that image in my head. <laughs> <laughs> okay, line number two. The most exciting sex is outside of marriage. That is a gigantic lie because mm -hmm. inside in the covenant of marriage, there are no STDs, sexually transmitted, none, zero. Mm -hmm. There's, you know, back in the 70s, there were two sexually transmitted diseases. 60s, and we, yeah. 60s, 70s. Mm -hmm. we had, and we had penicillin that would knock both of them out. There's stuff floating around today that Ajax won't clean. <laughs> so I would, I would consider, 30, 30 I, would, new yeah, I would consider very carefully, consider very carefully the word of God and why it's there. It is there. It is there as a fence. I always thought it was a fence to keep me away from fun. It is a fence to keep me from experiencing things like that. Um, keep you from danger. Yeah, yeah. In, the, in the bounds of marriage, and a survey was done by a secular magazine, Red Book Magazine. You ever hear of it? They did a, a survey, who's having the best sex, because they want to put this kind of article in their book because it sells magazines. Um, well, they found Should out that it was heterosexual married Protestant women. You. Yeah, woo -woo. well, only one woo woo. That's that's sad yeah. for us. <laughs> that was a great place, ladies, for a great amen. You say that, yeah, you should have boasted right it's there. It's going to boast the Lord, and it makes your husband woo -woo. feel very good. All right. So, 
And that's all I'm going to say on that one. But let me, let me just say about the wild oats. Every woman in here, because women really are much more open emotionally about what they're going through than mm -hmm. men are sometimes. But every woman, if you've been married for a little while, has heard another woman say, I got married too young. I didn't get a chance to have my childhood. Mm -hmm. I never got to have fun. I never got to go out and sow my wild, wild oats. oats. You don't want to sow no wild oats because <laughs> you get some wild mess when you <laughs> sow some wild oats. Um, but let me, let me just say, this is, you know, this is a time for you as a young woman, either unexperienced in sex or in a, 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 in a, a committed relationship, uh, in marriage, to be able to say, everybody's going to visit this time. It's a mm -hmm. temptation. Mm -hmm. Who told you that? Mm -hmm. Who told you that? The enemy is trying to pull you away. And let me say something. When it's the hottest, when it's the hardest in your marriage, when you have fought the toughest, and, and, and amen, it's because, amen, it's because it's because God is birthing a blessing, and Satan, in his very demonic way, will do everything he can to get you to not receive that. Mm -hmm. But some of us persevere. Amen. Any hallelujahs in the house? <laughs> um, anyway. What are, you, what are you doing? <laughs> um, Where are we going with this? This is uh, Sex in the City, um, Desperate Housewives is basically women porn, which is what we're going to talk about next, next week, week when we talk about women. Mm -hmm. But these shows have so glamorized. This, this one show used to be on HBO because a while ago it was not deemed suitable for TV, but now it's on syndication, and you can at any time turn it on and just see, just I mean, just flipping through the channels. It's the same thing with every commercial on any major network. Somebody's being thrust up against a wall or shoved down on a desk, and it is aggressive sex taking that has nothing to do with love. It has everything to do with lust, and this is what we're feasting our eyes on, mm -hmm. and this is why we have little girls and little boys in an engagement that they are not mature enough to handle, mm -hmm. and we want to empower them to wait for love. Amen. Um, one of the, in point number two a while ago, is about sowing wild oats. You're never supposed to have comparisons in your head. Mm -hmm. You're never geared that way. That's where jealousy enters in. Mm -hmm. You know that? If you, can, if you have some other, like if you never drove a Mercedes, Volkswagens is good. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, you don't have to have the latest and greatest, but we think we do. Or we think we have to have some sort of try-on feature, you know, before we purchase. It's great for shoes. It's terrible for relationships. Mm -hmm. Just do that with what, what, what you want. This is all you. Here's what the world says. Bible sexual standards are unfair to homosexuals, transsexuals, and people who are born a certain way and can't help who they are. It creates prejudice against sinners and makes hypocrites out of Christians. That's it's a, a it's, quote it's from a Jimmy, quote Evans. Jimmy Evans. You might, you might want to say that one more time for the people listening to podcasts. Bible sexual standards are unfair to homosexuals, transsexuals, and people who are born a certain way. You know, we live in a society of I can't help it. Road rage is now called intermittent, intermittent outburst anger disorder, disorder. Or, uh -huh. or something like that. It, it creates prejudice against sinners and makes hypocrites out of Christians. So, in other words, what this statement is saying is, is that it's not my fault I was created that way. And we, we want to really confront that. But first, before we do that, let's read this scripture, and then we'll talk about what, this, what, what God says. Did you click? Yep. Do, do you not know that the wicked will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither the sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor male prostitutes, or homosexual offenders, nor thieves, or the greedy, or drunkards, slanderers, swindlers, they will not inherit the kingdom of God. And that is what some of you say the word. Were. Were. Hallelujah. But you were washed, you were sanctified, Purified. you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of God. So, so I want you to look at all those clumped together. I don't know how we got into this sectarian place where there's one thing that we're going to tackle. Yeah. I mean, really? It's a lot. None of us would be here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not one of us. Mm -hmm. do, do a, a liar? A swindler? I, it just so the idea. I have a philosophy, so I just want you to know that this is not theology. Cat this theology. is a cathology. I just want to share this with you. When I read the scripture, there's two sediments that occur. You'll see here the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God, uh, and the kingdom of heaven. 
I believe the kingdom of God is a location. I believe the, uh, I believe the kingdom of heaven is an atmosphere. Um, and so when you look at the scriptures, primarily in the gospels, they're talking about an operating system and a destination location, yeah. and a location. Mm -hmm. So I think um, there's been so many times in my life I thought, well, I've lied BC. Uh, I've, I've, I've lied after my Christian salvation. Mm -hmm. I also am convicted by my precious Holy Spirit that that's not how I should be. I ask forgiveness and I stop lying. I am not a practicing liar. In fact, I'll call myself out. I'll repent. I'll change my mind. I'll go apologize. I'm still a woman. I'll still manipulate. That's a form of lying. There's still things that you have to come to terms with, but I'm not a practicing liar. I am a new creation in Christ learning to get my body in agreement with who he says I am by mm -hmm. focusing on my identity here. Mm -hmm. When you look at you were washed and you were sanctified, which means purified and justified, just as if you've never sinned, that's what happens when you come to Christ. Mm -hmm. So when you come to Christ and you were homosexual, because if you, if you saw this guy here, he still looked like he was very in touch with his feminine side. I mean, he looked really fashionable. We would have I, I, forgive me for we this, but judged. we call it, and I know this might be really trite, but the, you know, you'd be able to easily determine, we call it gaydar, that that person was gay. When somebody's very flagrant about their homosexuality, you know, it's not a surprise. Mm -hmm. But this man, if he was deemed outside, nobody talked to him, maybe saw him walk or heard him order a hamburger somewhere, would have been like, that guy's gay. And so you got to stop doing that. Or that or that woman, is uh, is that a man or is that a woman? Is that a man or is that a woman? And and the truth is, is the scripture really gives us some... And you don't stand behind somebody at the grocery store and say, that guy's a, an adulterer. Yeah, or, or a liar. Or, or that guy's or a liar. Or a perjurer. You know, but, you, it's just we don't we, we pick and choose these one gigantic thing that is the end of all end, and it's not. It's and it's not, pulverizing God, us. God lumps all these into the same category. The great thing I love about this scripture, if you want to go back yeah. and just reference it for a second, is the first line where it says, don't you know that the wicked will not inherit the kingdom of God? And then he's going to categorize what wicked means to him. And the kingdom of God is his place that where he resides, and he says, you can't come in near me if you're like this. But the, the truth of the matter was, in verse 11, it says, and that's what you were. If you would have stayed this way, you couldn't come to me. But I've sent my son so that now you can come to me. And so how about the other people that are pre-saved that haven't opened up a little gift wrap yet? They can come to him. So let's us stop excluding people that can come to him. That's, that's my stance on homosexuality or lying or anything else. If we stop excluding them and help them come, and we don't help them come with this, right there, we help them with this. Yeah. To love them to the Lord. Yeah, the Bible says that kindness leads to repentance, not A change judgment. of mind. Kindness leads to a change of mind. But let me just give you my theology because I want to finish my point. That if it is a destination, mm -hmm. they don't enter into the kingdom of God. Why is it? Why is it that he doesn't want idolaters, liars, perjurers, swindlers, homosexuals? Because every one of them rebellion. is rebellion. And he kicked rebellion and out. He kicked it out. He can't invite that back into heaven so that rebellion will rule again in heaven. You have to come to him made new in Christ, understanding your ability to be subject to that, but now there's a greater power in you than that is in the world. Do you get that? He doesn't, can, he, cannot, he cannot bring you within the confines of heaven with that spirit. Remember when the guy comes in and they're at the wedding supper and everybody's got their wedding clothes on because they're in Christ and this one guy doesn't have his wedding clothes on. He's trying to bring rebellion into the kingdom. You cannot come in here. I cannot have a rebellious spirit live. You have to humble yourself in my son. Do you, do you see that? Okay, it's a catheology. Do what you want with it. Um, but I, I think it's pretty sound. But Okay, we're good. Hit it. Okay. Intermittent sin, um, uh, practicing sin. We talked about that, that you're going to have sin. If you're practicing this, if you come to the Lord and you're still struggling with uh, you know, um, for me, I, 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 I 
got delivered from smoking like that. It took David six months to quit smoking. Um, it, it takes time, and we've got to be committed in this church to be able to walk that process out with people. If they come and they still have, let's just say, just for an example, say prostitute clothes, and, and that starts to slowly but, dwindle, slowly but surely dwindle away, we can't be like, how could you come in like that with your bad self? And you can't, you can't you, you, we're loving them in. We've got to be super sensitive that people are at many levels of maturity. If you're going to pick on homosexuals, then fornicators and adulterers too. And let me tell you, this is really, really prevalent in the church. We've got people here right now that I love with all my heart, and I think that this subject has maybe hurt them. They're, 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 they're not married. I want them to be married. It's okay that they're not married. They're so welcome here. But when you get pricked like this and you don't want to hear it because you want to do it your way, mm -hmm. you'll, you'll, you'll just like, I'm not going to listen. I'll come back when you're talking about finances or when you talk about grace. But here's the instruction that keeps us from living in the fullness that God's promises. People say that they can't help where they, who they are, and none of us could, could yeah. we? Right, Until we got... Jesus, Jesus right. until we were able to have self-control, which is the fruit of the Spirit. I couldn't say no. I didn't do heroin. I always do this like I did heroin. I never did heroin. I did plenty of other things, but they couldn't say no. That guy couldn't say no. How do you give your kids up? How do you rob from your mom to get drugs? You're gone. It's a lie. So Jesus is the answer. You say that, um, what do we got there? All of us are born with you some. We're good. Sorry. Okay. You got it. I said it last week that all of us are born with some kind of tendency or bent toward a specific sin. I don't ride, uh, or I don't rob banks, um, but I was a filthy young man. Um, I, I had a tendency toward, uh, um, never mind. But, <laughs> um, but, it's uh, all new, But baby. I needed deliverance from things. Yeah. We'll, just, we'll just say that, that, leave that alone. Every single person has to restrain themselves. Nobody can do it for you. You know that. Um, the only thing that causes you to change something um, in your head, like for me, it's for smoking, idea. it wasn't so I started picking sticks off of when I came to the kingdom. I didn't pick sticks off my life. I just became aware that smoking is not very pleasing to, I just had this conviction about it. It didn't, wasn't going to send me to hell. It just made me smell like I was had been there. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> I, and, and I was shortening my life, which is not very good stewardship. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, so I was taking this gift that God was giving me of great health and long life, and I was saying, snubbing him. Mm -hmm. I was having a hard time quitting, and she said, just visualize yourself blowing smoke in Jesus' face on the cross. And I'm like, well, thanks for that. <laughs> and it, made, it made me quit like that, though. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, so I repented. I just changed my mind on these little things, these little baby things. You know, when you first get saved, you think, okay, these little little stuff. And then as you go along, you're like, oh, the Lord doesn't like me to be judgmental either. I got to fix that. Yeah. You know? Hey, um, repentance, gang, very simple. It means the word repentance means metanoia. It means change your mind. So when you're witnessing to somebody, it's not about telling them that it's wrong, it's wrong, it's wrong. Tell them how God changed mm -hmm. your mind mm -hmm. and what the result of that was for you. Mm -hmm. Just let your life shine. Mm -hmm. It's not about telling them what they need to do. They've heard that plenty. Because I haven't struggled with homosexuality, but I'm not afraid to talk to a homosexual because I can just tell them what I've been delivered from. Now, whatever your bent is, he can deliver you from that too. Mm -hmm. I can't. I can't fix that in another person. I can't make you stop lying. If I meet a liar on the street or somebody addicted to alcohol, but I can speak to that because I had a little issue with that as well. Yeah, I would always like somebody's like, oh, I gotta quit smoking. I just, I, I know I gotta, you know, they have a problem, and I'd be like, oh, I hear you. I used to smoke. I totally mm -hmm. get it. I understand. I smoked for 13 years. I would never be like, yeah, you really need to quit smoking. <laughs> that would be very advisable. It's not very healthy. I'm like, me too. And, and I won't ever say, but Jesus, and, because that's not for me. You guys can do that. That's cool, whoever that works for. Mm -hmm. But they'll say, well, how'd you do it? Because they want, they want me to say Chantix or something or some kind of, I'm like, well, I got born again, and it changed my life. Like some of them, not all of them, maybe three out of ten people will say, born again from what? Or, or saved from what? Yeah. And that's where the conversation starts. I just I started learning a new way of living my life. I've never been happier. And I've got tons to learn. But I'm on my way, and that's what's good. The lure of lies. We're going to play one more. Um, Are we going to do it? I don't know. We're, we'll do it next week if you tell me. Here's what I would like to do. I'd like okay. to either continue this next week or post the remaining material online. Mm -hmm. Is that possible? Like a video? Yeah, next, I think this will work yeah. next week. Yeah, okay. Yeah, we, we, we might continue we on next week. Okay, we got two more weeks of sex and... And then you're done. And then, yeah. and then <laughs> you're no all more. sexed up. No more. Two more weeks and that's all you get. 
Uh, is everybody okay? Are we doing okay? Are we doing? Are, are you, you learning? learning? Are you learning? Are you getting some tools to help your community and help mm -hmm. people and your families and yourself, possibly? Listen, I have books that I'm going to be recommending next week. We have Lori Meisner, who's going to come up and have a wonderful testimony for us. And you guys are welcome to also come up and just tell what you learn. I mean, some people feel a need. I, I have this in my arsenal to give you, that your private testimony is to be used as God wills. If you were a lap dancer at Jim's Tom Belly Bar somewhere, I don't need to know that. In fact, I think it's, it can be a detriment unless God asks you to use that as a platform to give him glory. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I, I can tell you story after story. You know, there's men in here that have been in, in involved with, um, you know, DUIs and um, they were, you know, in rapes or, or parties that, you know, the outcome or theft. And, and there's a lot of shame that comes from that. But once you're delivered from that and you're in accountability with somebody else and you've, you've talked about that and you've given it to God, you actually get clean. It's, it's why the Bible says in James, confess your sins to one another so that you can be healed. It's like you got to get that off your chest. There's tons more than what I have dealt with here today. But I, I do want to say, too, the religious aspect of what we're coming into now, we're bringing freedom, and this is going to really stir up a lot of religious spirits. Mm -hmm. And so you've got to be really aware of what you're going to enter into when you take people, your freedom, um, there's going to be judgment mm -hmm. that you'll have to come under. And unfortunately, that's part of you bearing the your cross. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Anyway, you can put on some music because it just is a good thing to do. We just, we're going to take a minute and we're going to pray and then we're going to dismiss you. If, um, Father, if there's anybody here that's been restricted by uh, the lies of Satan, even today in this area, whether it be abortions, whether it be uh, rape, whether it be uh, fornication even now, Father, if there's somebody in here in the sound of my voice or listening on the podcast that has a soul tie with another man or another woman because they just feel so estranged from their husband, I pray your healing power through your Holy Spirit to start mending their heart. Father, you said that you came to heal the brokenhearted, and I believe that. I pray, Father, that your word continue to wash us and show us who we are. It says, Lord, that the bride and the spirit, they come. I pray that the remnant that you have here will see her beauty, that see her value, see how beloved she is, and that the bride at TLC will come forth and bring their beauty to the world so that people will be as in love with you as we're learning to be. Father, we don't know a lot of things, but your heart, is our pursuit. I think the only thing that keeps us, Lord, from opening that free gift sitting on our porch is condemnation. That's why you speak against these things so that our heart won't condemn us. But the, uh, the great scripture that says that you're greater than our heart even if we condemn ourselves, it means that you still love us. You still are leaning forward to bring us into your family. So Father, thank you for that washing by the water of this word that's come out and for sending your son, the word in human flesh to show us how to live that out. So Father, no condemnation. Help us all to unwrap our gifts. Yeah. In Jesus' name. Amen.